Stugatz here buying tickets to sports and concerts can be complicated, but there is a better, simpler way to buy with SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the smartest, easiest way to get tickets to live events. With SeatGeek's seamless mobile experience, you can buy and sell tickets in just two taps. SeatGeek helps you find the best seats at the best prices, fully guaranteed. There's nothing quite like seeing your favorite team or musician in person, and SeatGeek will get you closer to the action for a great value. I have the SeatGeek app on my phone, and it's by far the easiest way i found to shop for tickets. I could be anywhere, and with just a few taps, I can instantly find seats. SeatGeek is designed to make your ticket-buying experience easier than ever. SeatGeek saves you time and money by searching multiple ticket sites to compare prices and find amazing deals. Make SeatGeek your go-to app for finding the best deals on every type of ticket, from sports and concerts to comedy and theater. Best of all, my listeners get $20 off their first SeatGeek purchase. Just download the SeatGeek app and enter promo code LEBITARD today. That's L-E-B-A-T-A-R-D. That's promo code LEBITARD for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Hello, the Internet. My name is Jack O'Brien. I'm the founder and former editor-in-chief of Crack.com and the host of the new comedic news podcast, The Daily Zeitgeist. And I'm Miles Gray, Jack's co-host. Mm. The Daily Zeitgeist is a daily comedic news podcast for people who like Crack.com. Mm. Are, are you okay? Do you, do you want some water? Mm. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, well, also, if you like podcasts from How Stuff Works, and get <laughs> news from some of the funniest and smartest ah! comedic and journalistic minds around, go to Apple Podcasts to listen and subscribe. Oh! I think we got that. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Creators of the Name Your Price tool, choose from a range of coverage options and pick the price that works for you. Guest on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Penzoil performance line. Here's your Sports Center update. Monday Night Football, Jay Cutler and the Dolphins travel to Carolina to play Cam Newton and the Panthers. 8.30 Eastern on ESPN and simulcast in Spanish on ESPN2. Tennessee, winless, uh, winless this season in SEC play, has fired fifth-year head coach Butch Jones with two games left in the regular season. And finally, it's reported that Gal Gadot will not play Wonder Woman uh, again unless Brett Ratner's association with the franchise is severed completely. Warner Brothers told Page Six that the report is patently false and Gadot's publicist did not respond to messages seeking confirmation Ratner was a producer on Wonder Woman and his company, Rat Pack Dune, partnered with Warner Brothers to co-finance the movie, meaning it owns a piece of the $821 million and counting in worldwide box office earnings. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Got a lot to get to today. Useless sound montage, funniest thing of the sports weekend, Stugatz's weekend observations, all of that is around the corner. But let's start with the funniest thing from the sports weekend. Hey, people, tell us what in the sport made you laugh hard this weekend. It is a segment we call What Made You Laugh This Weekend. Ha, ha, ha. Funniest thing from the sports weekend is brought to you by Office Depot. This season, take care of business by treating yourself to great tech and furniture from Office Depot, Office Max. Allison Turner, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? The New York football giants. There you go. Good, A good selection right there. Macca doomed. We're going to miss him. The tabloids are doing a lot of Macca doomed. Yep. That team's physically broken. They won so many one-score games last year. They lost all their wide receivers in one game. And now it's lost locker room nonsense. You can't look like that and be losing. Yeah, you can't have a Jeff Fisher mustache. You can't have a Dave Wanstead mustache. Like, right. if you're going to look like that, you have to win. Correct. What is the look you need for acceptable Not McAdoo. Losing? Whatever the opposite of McAdoo is. He's 39 years old, and he right. looks like a struggling hot tub outlet manager. He even knew that. He changed his look this season. I know. Season. He tried, but it's ridiculous. You need to change his look. You need to change your look before you got the job. Now everybody's on to you. Guillermo, uh, what uh, what is the funniest thing from the sports weekend? As Chris Collinsworth last night on Sunday Night Football was praising Brock Osweiler for being good, he said he looks t- better, he looks sharp out there, he looks good tonight. He uh, he threw an interception. Yeah, of course he did. What did he, throw? <laughs> he tried to do it, throw it six yards downfield. He also hit some dude in the head on the sideline. Mike Ryan went to bed chortling with laughter watching that video <laughs> ten times. Some dude on the sidelines, Brock Osweiler's, of course, throwing the ball away. 
on second and six because of that menacing Patriots pass rush. His hat flew off. Yeah, and he just he just hit a guy right in the forehead with the tip of the football. People people ran to him afterwards. Yes, it was great. That happened to Herb Street too, by the way. He was saying how much better how much better Notre Dame's offense was looking with the the quarterback switch, and the very next play was a pick six. A pick six. <laughs> I um I have I can't remember the last time. In fact, I asked you this question. When was the last time any of you saw the quarterback of the number three team in the country look scared? Because they benched him because he was scared. They, he got That kid got benched in the second quarter because the avalanche had fallen on his head and Brian Kelly didn't want to trust a quarterback who was scared. Right. I'm surprised because you usually don't agree or go to that place where you I mean, can see why they, it in his eyes. That's why they bench him. Stuff, that's right. why they bench him. He was throwing screen passes, scared. He was just right. he had way too much on the ball. Like he wasn't he wasn't emotionally flatlined. Even if you don't say he was scared that he wanted it too much. Still, whatever was happening with that kid was all of it was too much for him. In your defense, you were mostly wrong about the game. But in your defense, you did say young quarterback going into an environment that he hadn't played in, and you said if Notre well, Dame can't run the ball, it's no. Be but a long here's night. the th- yeah, the Notre Dame Miami game. This is this is what had to be exasperating to Notre Dame, and this is how he came upon fear. Right. Wait a minute. Our strength's not a strength. Our greatest strength, running the football. Right. We can't do it. Now what? Oh, bleep, it's on me. Yep, I got to win them a game. Oh, bleep, it's on me. I'll go sit over there. Put someone else in. (laughs) Oh, bleep, he's worse than I am. Yes. Oops. Uh, Roy, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? Paul Feinbaum dancing with the tunnel of a chain on Sports Center. Yeah, it was pretty good. Paul. Uh, Mike, funniest thing from the sports weekend. And it was a really fun weekend. Uh, I really like the CFL celebration, but I'm going to go with uh, Conor McGregor's uh, celebration. He had a teammate win. I think it might have been a Bellator fight. I'm not exactly sure. It wasn't a UFC card, I don't think, but it was in Dublin, and he was celebrating so vigorously. He jumped over the rail, and, and he was so happy. And the guy was just in an MMA fight. He was pretty beat up. He needed treatment. The referee was trying to get Conor McGregor out of the, the ring. And he was, like, hugging him, like, knocked him on the ground from the hug and pretended to pound and ground and pound him in celebration. It was a great celebration, but the referee was trying to get uh, maintain order in that uh, ring, and then that turned into Conor McGregor trying to fight the referee for getting into his celebration with his teammate. Uh, the Chaos. C- the ensued. CFL celebration was really good. That they did. They lifted two guys lifted their teammate up into the bar, and another teammate. Did the Lombada underneath him. What was your uh, funniest thing from the sports weekend? A-Rod on game day. Turnover chain was backwards. The baby not giving him a high five. He still came out looking great, but, I mean, just A-Rod on game day. Yeah, 12-0 and 0 in picks, right? 12-0 yeah, yeah. and 0 in picks. Um, put the chain on backwards and broke it. Um, I thought the funniest thing from the sports weekend was everything that happened at the end of the Chargers-Jacksonville game ah. because it kept snowballing. Okay, Blake Bortles is going to get to the bleeping Super Bowl that way, throwing two interceptions in the last two minutes, and they win anyway because Phillip Rivers is on the sidelines. It's going to be amazing to watch Blake Bortles stumble his way to the Super Bowl. Ah, oh, damn. You know what? I should have went with the, the, the Juju Smith-Schuster celebration that he had with a teammate where they reenacted the Jalen Ramsey-A.J. Green fight with the chokehold takedown from behind. There were a lot of good celebrations this weekend. But the thing that I was telling you, I didn't get to finish. The starting point on that Chargers-Jags game was Marquise Lee is trying to catch a ball over the middle in the end zone. He gets hit with what looks like a legal hit but might not be a legal hit because what are the rules anymore? Helpless receiver, targeting, uh, all of that stuff. And so Marquise Lee was a helpless receiver, but the, 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 the hit appeared to be clean. They are down three. They are in field goal range, and the ref throws the flag, and that's going to get them even closer at field goal range late in the game. But what ends up happening is they pick up the flag and throw one on Marquise Lee because he was making love to the entire end zone, (laughs) dancing, impregnating, and they called him for taunting. And so it, what ended up being not 15 yards for them ended up being 15 yards in the other direction. I'm pretty sure Bortles threw four or five interceptions after that, and the Jags won anyway. Why? Because Phillip Rivers plays for the other team. <laughs> 
Money, 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 money. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Is Blake Bortles going to stumble, bumble, and four interception his way <laughs> to the Super Bowl? <laughs> I sure hope it so. was. He was so bad late. Like, all he kept doing is, I thought the game was over. I, so that's, I'm not kidding you. He threw one interception, and then I'm like, okay, that's over. The game's over. And then San Diego fumbled. And then he throws another interception. I'm like, well, clearly the game's over, right? And then, no, I don't know. They got the ball back with 20 seconds left, and they're kicking a field goal. I'm like, what? <laughs> got a football game tonight? You'll enjoy it even more with a nice glass of Larceny bourbon on the rock. Smooth taste for the intense action. Tell them, Stu Guy. Yep, we really love Larceny Weedy Bourbon. And so do you guys. We appreciate your support. They're supporting us. You support them. Just like a scout knows how to pick great players, their master distiller hand selects only the finest barrels. For a true small batch bourbon, Larceny Bourbon is award winning and made with more wheat for a smoother taste. It's bourbon making at its best. Smooth from the start, easy to drink, and worth sharing. Get caught in the act. Unlock the smoothness of Larceny Bourbon today. Try some for yourself or pick some up and share it with friends. Think wisely, drink wisely. Larceny Bourbon, Bardstown, Kentucky, 46% alcohol by volume. I'm sorry, it was the limbo, not the lombada. The best in the business, Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. Get in touch with the show anytime through the one eight hundred Flowers Twitter feed at Levitard Show at Stugat seven ninety. Dan, it is time for Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. Stugatz is so comfortable dismissing others, but the idea that you would dismiss Tom Coughlin, two time Super Bowl champion, ah. with old red crusty beak. Get your old, red, crusty beak. Those are just facts, man. <laughs> I mean, his beak is red, those, and you know are, there's crust those, just all around the perimeter. Those are not facts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> facts. Old, red, crusty beak of Tom Coughlin. Um, Texter writes in, I apologize for taking so much pleasure in Dan being wrong. Um, let's, uh, let's go around the room here. We're going to get to uh, Guillermo's useless sound montage in a second but how did you guys enjoy the weekend miami felt like a college football town for the first time in 15 years college game days ratings were through the roof miami notre dame that game itself was a ratings monster the notre dame defensive coordinator was caught on a live microphone before the game uh, with sound we can't play talking about uh, I'm so sick of these chains I'm so it was a lot of white guys in suits a lot of guys uh, white guys in suits sitting around and there was a live microphone around and and the defensive coordinator was saying we're not about chains we're about rings What's wrong, Guillermo? What a ridiculous thing. Like, one one form of jewelry is better than the other. Like, it's both jewelry. Necklaces, <laughs> rings. What difference no, does it make? No, but that guy doesn't want change. He's sick of the change. He wants rings. White guys. Well, white, 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 white. I mean, the <laughs> defensive coordinator for Notre Dame talking like that. Like, you're the most useless guy in that entire field. Your defense is terrible. Like your defense isn't any good. Your team was good because of your offense. It wasn't anything you were doing. They're not getting a you, ring because you, of you. You, you. you need to stay away from live mics, sir. I was going to say you're wrong, but not as wrong as I was about my Notre Dame Miami prediction. But no, I'm pretty much just as wrong. You, you were you were just as wrong as I was. You were equally wrong, defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, whose name I don't know. I'll let you slide on. Thank that you. One. You got it, uh, Guillermo. How do you feel about your useless sound montage? The NFL useless sound montage. It's okay this week. Doug Marone makes an appearance. Well, a few appearances. This is his coming out party, I think. Doug okay, Marone. I can't believe that uh, funniest thing from the sports weekend, nobody nominated John Fox. That was amazing. John Fox, if you were not watching, is the old crusty beaked face of the Chicago Bears. Ah. And old red crusty, excuse yes, me, old yes. red crusty beak. Get it right. Of the Chicago Bears. He had the ball at the one yard line. He challenged the call. Because he thought it was a touchdown. They went to review and noticed that the running back, the ball was slipping out of his hands. Those pylons, that's making me crazy this season. I don't like that. I don't like how many touchbacks there are where you're you're an inch from the goal line and somebody knocks the ball out of your hand and then it's a touchback. I miss the days where the uh, the end zone extended 
to the ends of the earth. This whole touchback rule, it's got me very confused. But John Fox actually challenged something that he shouldn't have challenged because he wanted one extra bleeping yard. And in doing so, he cost his team (laughs) the ball, the points. And if you'd seen his face when the ruling came back, there was no one in the world more surprised by that than he was. It's such a great sentence by Mike. Can we make that a poll question? Do you also miss (laughs) when the end zone was extended to the ends of the earth? Because Mike is right, it was. It, it was, was easier back then. The end yes. zone was just infinity. <laughs> yeah. Now, not only do you not have a touchdown, but you may be fumbling to get the touchdown and oh, it's the, the other team's The ball. worst example of that this year was that Safarian Jenkins one. I, I really do think that I'm, I'm getting bothered by something when it comes to replays, Dugat, in that I feel like there should be the, some spirit of the rule stuff there. Where people can just go, oh, come on, that was a touchdown. Right. I know technically the ball was jostling a little bit or whatever, but it we- depends how it affects my team. Like, that's the thing, Dan. Like, if it's this, if it's the rule and it goes against me because spirit of the rule, I'm going to be upset about it. There needs to be a dude that just says, come on, guys, Zach Miller just almost lost his leg. Yeah, touchdown. This is a touchdown. Right. Touchdown. It's the least we could do yes, for him. That's yes. right. Yes. Just a dude that, overseeing things. That hurts, man. Come on. Or a committee. All right, all right, Guillermo, let's do it. Guillermo's NFL sound montage. We just didn't come out with the right recipe for success today. Well, I think anytime you have a starter not there, you know, I think um, you miss them. You know, that's why they're starters. Obviously, working on a short week, um, those that limped out of the stadium probably don't have much of a chance. I thought our guys had a little more pep in their step. Uh, what's the big difference? They scored more points than we did. We played really good football uh, for for. Uh, a long time. Uh, just keep, man, just keep chopping wood and carrying water, man. Just keep out going, going to practice, practicing hard. And, you know, the, t- the tide going to turn, man. You know, it's kind of down right now, but the tide going to turn for us eventually. We just have to um, keep this momentum going. You know, uh, we got to ride the wave. Uh, we did what we felt we had to do. Obviously didn't get it done. Joe Hayden uh, has got a fibula fracture. Um, it's high on his leg. I don't know what that means. Obviously, Theo does what Theo does. I think I, every game so far, I feel pretty confident that I was getting better. And, and this is a, I was able to play the whole game. It wasn't bench. You know, the guys didn't blink and, and did to be given credit for that. I thought that was one of the better versions of our football team out there playing uh, today. Sometimes you're in rhythm, sometimes you're not. You know, there's a method to my madness, Mary Kay. Trust me. I know you guys don't think so. Everybody else probably would do it different, but everybody's not me. I'm a strong believer any ball thrown to me is a good ball. Man, I mean, they didn't, I mean, they played their they played their butts off. I'm exhausted right now. Yeah, I'm shot. Like I'm I'm shot. You okay there, big boy? Huh? Need a nap? I'm, like I said, I'm taking a week at a time, and I'm I'm boring. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, it's it's the same. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have the same answer uh, every week. I sit here, the players sit in this room, and I say, look. You know, hey, today is Wednesday. This is what we have to do on Wednesday. This is what we got to get done. Concentrate on Wednesday. Let's win Wednesday. Okay? If you don't win Wednesday, you don't win Thursday, you, you really don't have a chance what to win on Wednesday? Sunday in this league. We played hard. They played hard. We lost a unanimous decision in a 12-round fight. He's a get-it-done kind of guy. You know, he's going to make some plays you maybe don't expect him to, and he, he might miss a couple plays you'd like him to make. The only thing that's on his back is just the little things. Yeah, you're right. I mean, this is, this is, uh, this is not easy to take not easy to, not an easy pill to swallow. You know, we got to learn how to finish games um, playing ahead. He's a splash playmaker. We we need him and others to consistently make those type plays. We have to be hungry. We have to get our football right. We have to be disciplined. Be where we're supposed to be when we're supposed to be there. Do it as well as we possibly can. Do it all the time, and it's between our ears. What was your question? Yeah, um, I just look at it like you're trying to take food out of my daughter's mouth. I always tell the guys that and when that ball's in the air, I just got to go get it. Yeah, I mean, you're never going to win a game with four turnovers. I can... I can't promise you that, but I, I'm pretty confident you're not going to win a game with four turnovers. I can tell you right now. I'm going to go in. I'm going to take a shower. All right? I'm going to call my wife. Meet me at home. Pick up some bologna and cheese. I'm going to go out the back way. All right? I'm going to get in my car. I'm going to drive home. I'm going to listen to some music. Don't listen to the NFL. Don't listen to the scores or anything like that. Go home. Pet my dogs because we won. All right? And then, and then I'm just going to... <laughs> yeah, it, it's not it's not not as fun as you know. It's not like woohoo, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know that is that right there is the voice that you attach to Blake Bortles as your quarterback. <laughs> 
That is also Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. <laughs> this is the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guest on the Dan Levitard Show, appear via the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. Monday Night Football, Jay Cutler and the Dolphins travel to Carolina to play Cam Newton and the Panthers, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN, and simulcasted Spanish on ESPN2. Tennessee, winless this season in SEC play, has fired fifth-year head coach Butch Jones with two games left in the regular season. And finally, a NASA group has announced plans for four missions to probe into Uranus to investigate all the gas in it. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, Guillermo, put it on the poll. Are you surprised that the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars' celebratory meal is a bologna and cheese sandwich? <laughs> this Doug Marone. He needs to hold up the trophy for me. Win everything. Smother Brady and Belichick with that defense. <laughs> Time now for Stugatz's weekend observations. It is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. Dan, you can't spell you were loud wrong without the U. Notre Dame, more like Notre Lame. See if you can follow the pattern here, Dan. The Knicks are better. Without Carmelo Anthony. The Thunder are worse with Carmelo Anthony. University of Washington. It was nice not knowing you. Number 86 on Notre Dame. You realize when you scored that touchdown that Miami was leading 34 to nothing. Mike Ryan was right. The entire front seven for the Miami Hurricanes are going pro. You sometimes... Struggle to imagine what athletes will do in retirement. Getting arrested for public intoxication and tackling the lead singer of a country music band at an open mic night is exactly what I imagined retirement to look like for Josh Beckett. Best thing in sports, the angry, cold, frustrated face of Brian Kelly. Well, Georgia... Doesn't seem quite as good today. Georgia fired Mark Richt because he couldn't win big games. He spent the last two weeks winning big games. The turnover chain should win the Heisman Trophy. Nikola is no Jokic. Andrew Luck went to Europe to get his shoulder reevaluated. Here's what a reevaluation in Europe looks like a needle. Of God knows what Mm -hmm. in Luck's shoulder, Mm -hmm. and he's good as new. Mm -hmm. Alabama, close call. The Bucs are better without Jameis Winston. You know who ate a W? Ryan Fitzpatrick. Pittsburgh Steelers have weapons all over the field. Many thought the Vikings would go into the tank when they lost Sam Bradford and Dalvin Cook. Furthest thing from the case. Keenum. (laughs) <laughs> you know how I know Jared Goff is good? Because suddenly, Dan, Robert Woods is good. Bad win for the Niners. Great loss for the Giants. My football Saturdays have become better than my football Sundays. Butch Jones, fired. Tennessee job, vacant. John Gruden, ESPN contract extension press release. Collision course. <laughs> Collusion course. <laughs> You messed it up. I messed That should it up. be some sort of I fun. I messed it up. Collusion course. Juju Schuster-Smith mocking A.J. Green. Man, that's not kosher. Tariq Cohen, 11 total yards. Oy vey. For <laughs> Russell Westbrook's birthday yesterday, Carmelo gave his teammate the gift of not playing. Cowboys tackle. Chaz Green, otherwise known as Turnstile. Never thought. A member of the Munsters family would be able to beat a superhero. But Arthur Blank proved me wrong. He beat Plastic Man, Jerry Jones. Would it surprise anyone if Jerry Jones left a floater in the Falcons 
Owner's suites. <laughs> That's the kind of thing Jerry Jones would do. Put it on the pole, Guillermo. Do you think Jerry Jones left a floater in his owner's suite? There's no doubt about it. Dak Prescott, more like Dak Prescott. Mike Golick, you've never put your hand in this kind of dirt. Every other sport, take notes from college football. Their entire season is a playoff. Amazing. How much healthier Martellus Bennett got simply by getting further away from Mike McCarthy and Brett Hundley. Congratulations to John Fox for being the first coach ever to challenge a positive play into a turnover. A-Rod and the camera. I don't know who loves who more. The coach of Team 12. Let's just call him Scott, who told me to stop talking to him on the sidelines of our championship lacrosse game. Scott, don't flatter yourself. I wasn't talking to you. I only talk to good coaches. What? And by the way, Scott, you wanted us in the finals, and you got us. And what ensued was a beatdown of epic proportions. Christoph Porzingis. <laughs> and, well, damn, we beat him good. I mean, this team 12. Scott. Bunch of nice kids, and I like them. But their, sco- uh, their coach, Scott, not a nice man. And he thought I was talking trash to him, and I was not. You want to know why, Scott? I only talked to good coaches. And you wanted us, and you got us, and we beat you down. I mean, we beat you hard. But now you're talking I mean, my girls, coach. well, now I am. But listen, those are good girls. Team 12, you are good girls. I like you. I know many of you for many, many years. Our girls are just better. Sorry about that. Chris Stops, Porzingis, MVP, collision course. LeBron James said Dennis Smith Jr. should be a Nick. LeBron, do me a favor. Worry about your own team. Brock Osweiler's most accurate pass being one that he threw out of bounds that hit a guy square in the head is so Brock Osweiler. Brock on. J.J. Watt posting a private letter from Jose Altuve all over social media is so J.J. Watt. It's also so Stugatz. Damn, I am J.J. Watt. I even have as many sacks as he does this season. The Bills were a breeze for the Saints. Dallas lost, the Giants lost, and the Redskins lost. The Eagles are so good, they even won on their bye week. Blake Bortles, he lost his team the game, even though they won. No one has less of a pulse for the Florida college football scene than Dan Lebitard. (laughs) FAU, FIU, Lane Kiffin, Butch Davis, Shula Bowl, more like the Greasy Bowl. FAU, FIU, the first ever Winner leaves town match. Kiffin, Davis, whether it's the Florida job or inevitable NCAA infractions, one coach isn't making it out of that stadium, which can only mean one thing. Art Bryles is going to be watching this one very closely from hell. Yes! Dan! Yes! Those are the weekend yes! observations. Yes! Glory be to guts! <laughs> money, 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 money! I don't understand why you fell in love with the Steelers this weekend. Oh, they're good. But I they, think at Schuster, Martavius Bryant is now playing because he has no other choice. I mean, Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, they, they are they, good. They weren't good this weekend. They just... They're well, they're 7-3, and three, man. They're well, right okay. in the mix. Okay. They're good. Watch it. I mean, no one wants to face Ben Roethlisberger in January. No one. Except the Patriots. Well, then. Dr. Pepper... Tell them more, Stu got. Yep, love Dr. Pepper. College football season, it's that time of year filled with coolers, cases, and cups of delicious ice-cold Dr. Pepper that leave us all craving for more. More big hits, strip sacks, flea flickers, onside kicks, pick sixes, tailgates, house parties, homecomings, rivalries, overtimes, double OTs, dual-threat quarterbacks, comebacks, upsets, or any excuse to storm a field and tear down a goalpost. Others crave five-star recruits, cupcake schedules, Cinderella stories, a top 25 ranking, and, of course, the college football playoff invented by Mr. Ice Cold Dr. Pepper himself, Larry Culpepper. Then there are those weirdly specific cravings like a solid 50-50 raffle, the corn dogs at concessions, starting a chant, saying hi to your mom on the Jumbotron, a good old-fashioned mascot, uh, mascot fight, or maybe a fresh new koozie to keep your Dr. Pepper nice and cold. 
Fans covet lots of different things throughout the college football season, but there's only one thing fans crave all season long. The sweet, refreshing taste of an ice cold Dr. Pepper. Grab some at your local store today and have yourself an excessive celebration with college football's greatest tradition. It's Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. There is nothing better than the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. It is time to check out the next generation with the Home Depot. Ben Simmons is off to a hot start as he leads all NBA rookies in points per game with 17.4, rebounds per game with 9, and assists per game with 7.8. That's a look at the next generation brought to you by the Home Depot, the next generation of home improvement with everything you need to do Project Smarter. The Home Depot, more saving, more doing. Can any of you imagine what happened to John Fox happening to Bill Belichick? All of it, the visuals of it. Costing your team points with your decision, losing the ball, actively playing defense against your team's chances of scoring points. <laughs> Nobody stopped the Bears better yesterday than their own coach at the goal line. <laughs> Can you imagine that no, happening to Belichick? And then his face afterward. Yeah. The John Fox, you know, it's the, it's the, what's that commercial for the, is it Southwest? Want to get away? Uh, I think it is yeah, Southwest. Yeah, 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 you want to get yeah. away because you're so embarrassed. Right? I mean, he was, he was, you could see the embarrassment on his face, the shock and embarrassment on his face as he realizes, oh my God, I was challenging a ball at the one yard line. I wanted a couple of extra inches. They just ruled that my guy was fumbling the ball. I lose the points. I lose the game. Right. I lose the points, I lose the ball, I lose the game. I feel like Belichick would have, like, he's surrounded with so many good and smart people that would say, Bill, listen, don't challenge that one because we're going to we're gonna lose the ball. Right, just get just up to the, the line, two get up to the line, line rush it, yeah, it, rush yeah, it, and yeah. sneak it. Right. Uh, did you guys see something that happened in the Steelers game that, um, I don't know how much attention was paid to it, but the Colts were up 17-9. Yep. And the Steelers were kicking the extra point to make it 10. And the Colts blocked it and had a clean path to the end zone with the ball. And what was back was just the kicker and a tight end who might have been the holder, like number 81. I don't, it was a tight end chasing, chasing the play from an angle. And the, the guy with the ball was headed toward two points and had a blocker. And number 81 tackled him at the, at like the four yard line. And. You're sitting here talking about the Steelers. If that play goes the way that it would have gone, the Steelers would have lost that football game. Right. Uh, but it didn't, and they won. Because they're good. And the Colts are bad. And those are the types of things that happen to the Indianapolis Colts and Chuck Pagano when they don't happen to Mike Tomlin and Ben Roethlisberger. Mm-hmm. Yep. They do. They happen to the John Foxes <laughs> of the world. There is no way that that holder and kicker should have been chasing down that play. They happened to the Hugh Jacksons of the world. Hugh Jackson, whatever happened on the goal line there before the end of the half, first half yesterday, the Browns get the ball at they're on the goal line, and they're they're like twenty seconds left in the half, and they don't have any timeouts, and they sneak it, and they don't make it, and for some reason they are going unbelievably slow, and time just runs out on the half, and good God, do you look moronic. It doesn't help that you also haven't won a game this season. Right. I love that he said after the game, we played in the useless sound montage, that that was the best version of his team. They lost by 14. They lost by 14. No, but they played well. They did the play Brown, well. The Browns played well. They yes. moved the ball. Kaiser did uh, the kind of thing that uh, you, you know a guy who should still be in college is going to do in his rookie year. It was tied, headed into the fourth quarter on the road in Detroit, and then Stafford did what he does in the fourth quarter. Throw a touchdown. What's Stafford's record this year? Because you haven't had any Stafford jabs. He's in a month. five and four. Really, it's, oh, he's, uh, he's lost every game. Well, since he's you really six and three. Him. One of those didn't count. I think we all established that. The Falcons game. Yeah, the Falcons game. That was a win. So he's really six and three. He's really is he six the three. same six and three as the bogus Titans who have a negative point differential? Do people actually think the Titans are good now? Yes. Don't. <laughs> They're minus eight. I mean, they, they've been outscored this season. Like, the guys are still going to do this thing with the record. Yep, six and three. Yeah, that the six and three mean you're good in the NFL. Yes, I'm working on the Titans. Uh, Dan was loud, wrong montage, marking it. Yep. I Go mean, ahead. the Chiefs are six and three. Well, here's yeah, here's the thing. God, the Titans, the AFC is puke, man. It's oh. puke. Yes, and Belichick, the Browns, yeah. and the Browns are winless in it. Yep. <laughs> 
Yep. <laughs> the, the A, like you realize how hard it would be for the Patriots to make their way through that NFC gauntlet. Uh, pretty hard. Yes. I mean, the NFC is loaded. But I mean, they're, they're the Patriots are the Cavs. The Patriots are looking around and they're like in their division. Crud, crud, right. crud. Could you say and, that the Warriors playing in the East? No, I, well, okay, if you want to do that, that's fine. But I think we all see that this Patriots team is flawed. None of us would be surprised if Jacksonville won a game against the Patriots just because their defense ravages Tom Brady. <laughs> would we? Would I'd we be, be shocked. Yeah. If Bortles beats Brady, I'd be shocked. You'd be shocked. Okay. <laughs> Mi familia, Dan and Stu, will be back on ESPN Radio. You can always count on Bud Light, just like you can always count on Tailgate Terry. Without Tailgate Terry, you wouldn't have cold Bud Lights and seven-layer dip at every pregame. That's 56 layers per season. Just the right amount if you ask Terry. Tailgate Terry is famous among friends. He deserves a Bud Light. Enjoy responsibly Bud Light beer. ABC St. Louis, Missouri. 